This is Ulaanbaatar, a thriving metropolitan city, the capital of modern nomads. The city is booming with new buildings and construction sites that appear year after year. But did you know that the city is home to the hidden treasures of Mongolian history? Here is Paul from Poland, who is eager to find the overlooked but historically significant spots in Ulaanbaatar. He has chosen nine destinations that he thinks are important. As a researcher of Ulaanbaatar, he has lots of things to share about the Mongolian capital. Now let's start our tour with him. Hi, my name is Paweł Stop, and this is Ulaanbaatar city the capital of Mongolia. I've been coming here for over a decade and I think I know the city pretty well. Today, we're gonna take you on a tour for some of the city's most important historical spots. Some of them quite popular, some of them rather neglected. Thanks to this tour, you're gonna get to know the city's soul better. Let's go. Paul is a doctoral student at the University of Warsaw. Ulaanbaatar is a topic that fascinates him and he's even writing his thesis on it. It's already been more than 10 years since he was first introduced to the city. Now, he's arriving at his first destination, Builders Square, located in Chingalte district. Okay, so we're here at the um, Construction Workers Square. And uh, as far as I know, this is a very important place for speaking about the history of the city. And uh, even before it developed uh, its modern face, it would be a very important spot. Uh, this place was called Mahendal before, which means the um, Meat Hill. It was a, the a spot of the city's main marketplace. And people would come here to both buy things and exchange information. And this is why a lot of the uh, city's life concentrated around this area. Beginning in 20th century, during the reign of Bogdhan, the capital of Mongolia was called Nislilhure. Can you imagine that? The place where Paul is standing was a meat marketplace at that time. Buildings were rare at the time, but as a busy area, the buildings that were constructed around it have been preserved. If you have a look around uh, the buildings that uh, surround the square, you have the first department store, uh, which was later the, first, uh, the building of the first cinema. Then you have the second building of the State Department store, which is now the Fine Arts Museum, uh, named after Zana Bazar. Then you have the first um, drug store, the first European drug store. Just behind it, just uh, north of it, you have the first Mongolian drug store. Then behind me, you have the Ministry of Urban Construction, which is also uh, located here because, specifically because of the name and because of the history behind the uh, construction workers square. The Builders Square got its modern face in 1960 and got its name in 1970. The square itself was built to commemorate the construction workers who played a major role in shaping modern Ulaanbaatar. Now, the Paul is going inside the tall restaurant. So this is Tool the restaurant, the first restaurant in Ulaanbaatar city and also the first building devoted to hosting a gastronomical establishment. It's been built in 1948 and up until today it serves its purpose, meaning that it's been active over 70 years. After visiting the restaurant, 
Paul is now heading to the Tannhäuser Museum of Fine Arts. The building was used as a department store right after its opening in 1914. In 1966, it became a museum named after Zanwater, who was Mongolia's first Vogtgegen, a spiritual leader. So, the Fine Arts Zanwater Museum. This building used to also serve as the State Department store. And just in front of it, already since 29, the bus services would run, and since 1954, it was the first taxi stop in the city. So from boards like these located all around the city, you can get additional information about different spots, their history, and in general, the history of the city. And this place, the Construction Workers Square, uh, didn't look like this back in the day. The west part of Selb River was flowing straight through the middle of the square and also beyond far away. As you can see, this place can uh, speak a lot about the um, 20th century development history of the city as well as uh, things that happened here before and how this life in the city looked before. Now, Paul is heading to his next destination, which is a very familiar place for residents of Ulaanbaatar. This is Sukhpatar Square. So, Sukhpatar Square, the main square at the same time, the central point of the city, surrounded by several historical buildings from both sides, open towards the south, in my, behind me, in the back, you can see the government house with the monumental statue of Chinggis Khan. The modern face of the square was established in 1921, along with the um, victory of the People's Revolution. Up uh, from 46, uh, you have the statue of Damdin Sukhpatar, a national hero, a hero of the People's Revolution. So what should be said about uh, the general atmosphere, the general um, characteristics of the buildings surrounding the square, is that since they've been developed during the socialist period, uh, most of them, uh, as you can see, contain many neoclassicist features, columns, the tympanons and stuff like that. And one important thing is that people, citizens, entering the square from the south, as the square was open towards the south, would first uh, face the cultural buildings, the cinema, the opera house, the state um, cultural palace. So throughout this, also the socialist politics of enculturing the people would manifest itself. For his third destination, Paul is heading to the birthplace of Sukhpatar, after whom the main square was named. So the next place I want to show you is uh, the birthplace of Sukhpatar, Damdini Sukhpatar, uh, Mongolia's very important national hero, uh, who was the leader of the People's Revolution in 1921. Mongolian military leader Sukhpatar was one of the revolutionary heroes of 1921. He is also known as one of the seven revolutionaries sent as delegate to Russia to ask for help for Mongolia. So these are the statues of the so-called first seven. The first seven conspirators of the People's Revolution and one of them should be Sukhbatar. Can you guess which one is it? Okay, so this stela, made by the project of Vanchik, a Mongolian artist, commemorates Sukhbatar's birthplace and it says 
Dandin Subater's birthplace. Basically, that's what it says. You have the Soyombo on top and the date 1893, which is the date of Subater's birth, below it. All in Mongol Bichigor, the Mongolian script. Now, Paul has reached the Mother Thara temple, which belongs to the Manchu era from 1706 to 1911. Okay, so here we are at Darek temple. This is the last remaining piece of architecture from Maimahot or the Chinese district uh, of Hure, which is how Ulaanbaatar was previously called. There were seven temples in Maima district and this is one of them. These columns that you can see here are approximately 230 years old and this whole complex is um, protected uh, on the state level. So, as you understand, this is a very important place in the scale of both the city and the whole country. In the old days, there were dozens of monks who served at the temple. Okay, so as I said, Darek temple is the last surviving part of Maimahot, which was part of Hure, now called Ulaanbaatar, and a tea route going from China to Russia was crossing through Hure. And obviously, because in Maimahot or the Chinese district, you had lot, you have, a, you had a lot of traders dealing tea, different garments, and obviously also other products. This is why this monument has been uh, placed here. It commemorates the tea route, and it's part of a project of Russia, China, and Mongolia. That feels like a time traveling, didn't it? Now. Where are you heading next, Paul? So, we have arrived at the Ulaanbaatar City Museum. You can see the museum building behind me. It's more than 100 years old. It's been built as private quarters of a tradesman, of a Buryat tradesman, Tsokt Karmaevich Badamjao, and he's been living there for almost 20 years until his arrest in the 1930s. Since then, the building has served different purposes. It's been the embassy of the Turvan Republic, a printing house, and also the headquarters of the government for a certain time. And since the 1950s, it's, uh, it has housed first the exhibition of uh, the city's development and history, and after that it was changed into a permanent museum as which it serves up until now. That's good to know. Now, Paul, can you share some interesting facts about the museum with us? So at the moment, this is one of the oldest buildings in the capital. And to name just one curious trivia about the place, as you can see, uh, up on the roof, there is a table that's been turned upside down. And the story behind it is that when with the victory of the People's Revolution, the Tsarist rule was overthrown in Russia. Tsokt Karmaevich Badanjao, who was the owner of this building, turned the Tsarist table upside down and tied a red flag on each of the legs of the table. So up until now, as uh, a reminder of that um, event of that time, the table remains at the top of the museum building. Let's have a look inside. Being housed in a historical house, the Ulaanbaatar City Museum is a hub for learning everything there is to know about the Mongolian capital. The museum showcases about 1,000 artifacts in three halls. This is another very important exhibit in the museum. It's a large-scale copy of the original Jugdur painting that is kept in uh, the Bogd Khan uh, Winter Palace Museum. Mm, so why this is an important exhibit is exactly because it shows the uh, spatial situation of Ulaanbaatar around 100 years ago, uh, before it actually was renamed Ulaanbaatar. So you can see the um, 
Nislit Hure or the Capital Hure, the Capital Encampment as it was called at the time. This is uh, the surround structure here is the um, Hure type settlement. Hure meaning around encampment, opened to the south with the main structures located in its center and surrounding structures of lesser importance around the center of, of the Hure. And as you can see, this structure also reassembles the structure, structure of the Mongolian Gir with the entrance from the south, the main part or the gozomt in the center uh, and the uh, surrounding areas devoted to different activities. Today, Subatr Square is located more or less in this area. And back in the day, as you can see, this was a giant um, pile of trash, basically. Uh, so when the people's uh, government took over control of Mongolia, they cleaned all the trash and to not have the center of the capital of the People's Republic located in the same place as the center of the theocratic Bogd Han Mongolia, they moved it southwards and uh, located it basically more or less here. The construction workers square which we visited previously uh, is now located around this area and you can also see the Mahandov or uh, the uh, Meat Hill, the main marketplace of Hure at that time here uh, with the Zanabazar Museum building here and as I told you when we were at the square uh, the western part of the, of the Selb River would uh, flow through Hure and now uh, it's been closed so we can see it flowing through here on the picture. Yeah? So, as you can see, this is the Ulaanbaatar City Museum. Quite an interesting place if you want to get to know more about the history of the city. And what's most important is that this is the uh, only institution working on preserving and advertising the history of the city. If you're interested in Ulaanbaatar, definitely be sure to take a look inside. Thanks. We have arrived at Dambatarja Heat, Dambatarja meaning the blossomer of religion and this is actually the oldest architectural complex of Ulaanbaatar. It's been built in the 1760s and during the time of its uh, biggest development, of its biggest activity, it contained around uh, 30 structures, 30 temples and maybe around 1500 monks would serve here. Actually this is one of my favorite spots in Ulaanbaatar because uh, some of the architectural features are really fascinating here. The temple was dedicated to the second Jabtsundamhotukt from the Manchu Emperor, who was the religious leader of all Mongolian Buddhists. Okay, so this is the Serund Lavring of Dambadar Chahid. Serund Lavring meaning the cool or chilly palace. Okay, so this is the Tsokchin temple, the main temple of the Dambadarja complex. And as you can see, this is quite a, a big establishment. Also during the Second World War, Japanese POVs were kept here. And also the place served as a hospital for a time. And in recent years, it has been renovated and this is how it gained today's look. So these two pavilions are called the Western and the Eastern Temple and they contain two stone stelas uh, on the one in the Western Temple which is the one that I'm standing in now. You have on the front or the south side um, the uh, Mongolbichik or Mongolian script and Tibetan script information about 
the reason for creating this place, the reason for uh, for building the monastery, establishing the monastery, and uh, who it was dedicated to, and namely to the second Jetsundampa. Uh, and uh, in the eastern one, you have the same information in the Manch, Manchu in the front, or in the, on the south side, and on the back side, the north side in Chinese. Paul's next destination is in the very south of Ulaanbaatar. This is Daisinghil. We're at Daisinghil now, the Soviet soldiers' memorial. It commemorates the cooperation between Mongolia and Soviet soldiers during the Second World War. And it was first monument that appeared here was uh, built in 54, 1954, but this specific memorial was built between 1969 and 1971. Dancing Hill is one of the main attractions in Odambata. The people go up hundreds of stairs and some people even count them. Inside it, you can see a quite intricate mosaic depicting different scenes of cooperation between Mongolian and Soviets. And outside of it, you can see different medals depicted on the reliefs. The round shape of the memorial is supposed to resemble a tuduk or the tripod placed in the heart of the Mongolian gear, the Mongolian yurt. And outside of it, you see a statue of a Soviet soldier. And the next place Paul going to visit is a very precious site for Mongolians. This is the Boltram Palace Museum. On your way between Jaisan Hill and the center of Ulaanbaatar, you can visit the Winter Palace of Bogtan, which is the only one remaining of four palaces of Bogjev Tsunapa Hutuktu, which were spread throughout Hure. And uh, as you can see, it has some quite intricate architectural and design features. It was built between 1893 and 1905 and it hosts both a temple complex as well as living quarters of the Bogd Khan. So be sure to take a while to check out the place. Bogd Chavtsundam was not only the national spiritual leader, he also was recognized as the monarch of Mongolia. Bogd Khan's palace consists of two main structures the Summer Palace and a Winter Palace. The Winter Palace is a two-story building. In front of the palace, there is a ceremonial gate. In front of temple and uh, monastery complexes like this one, you can always find a wall that's called the Yampai Wall. This wall is always placed in front of the main entrance to the monastery or the temple complex to prevent the bad spirits from entering into the premises of the complex. Bogtran's palace is full of mesmerizing exhibits. It impresses visitors with its originality and historical value. Now, Paul is going to his last destination, Ichtingringam. It's a very important spot that contains a unique natural exhibit. We have arrived at Ichtingringam, the closest petroglyph spot from the city. This rock behind me contains petroglyphs from three periods. Paul is trying hard to reach the petroglyph. Be careful, there are thorny plants everywhere. Okay, this one wasn't easy, nettle all around my ankles, but I'm here. 
So um, here you can see these three different types of petroglyphs in one spot. The oldest ones with the red ochre are these. You can see a, um, just let me get there, a bird here and also some uh, animals down here. Also a human figure here. Then you have the vertical Mongolian script here and the image of the woman in the uh, boktak, the traditional Mongolian hat. And um, here, this one, what does it say? It says, Omani Padme Hum, as we could have fought. So a uh, Tibetan mantra, yeah? So three types of petroglyphs. The oldest ones, then the middle ones from the 13th or 14th century, and Tibetan script, Buddhist mantra. Okay, now let me get down. If you are in Ulaanbaatar, it's a great chance to see an ancient petroglyph up close. So, this was Paul's trip through the city of nomads, which still bears the traces of thousands of years of history. Thank you, Paul from Poland, for guiding us through Ulaanbaatar. I hope that thanks to our tour you got to know Ulaanbaatar city a bit better and you found out some interesting facts about the places we visited, some interesting stories that would not be so easy to access otherwise. Enjoy your time in the city and in the countryside. Take care. This is Pavel Schap and we visited Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia.